A deal that will change the landscape of the airline industry forever. Three weeks ago, U.S. Airways CEO Doug Parker announced the merger with bankrupt American Airlines. And this morning, I sat down again, once again, with Doug to talk about what it's like to create the world's largest airline. I asked him how consolidation is going to affect the consumer once these companies finally come together. Oh, they're going to see the chance to fly to so many more places on American Airlines than they can today, um, or on U.S. or they could today on U.S. Airways. So the entire world is now open to customers of both airlines that, that didn't exist before. So uh, that did exist on a couple of other larger airlines, and they were they were using that to to do a good job of taking away share from the rest of us. This allows us to go compete with those two, those two large airlines, United and Delta, uh, in a way that will create a third large competitor for those carriers. So it's great for consumers. So uh, I went on Orbitz this morning, yeah. and I found that if I want to fly from here to Charlotte and back, there are four different airlines, and it's like 469 to $480 across all four. So, I mean, if it's that tight, if it's already that competitive, how do you make it more competitive? How do you make it better for consumers? Because there are a lot of places you can't get to uh, on either airline, and the fares aren't at those, aren't necessarily that competitive. Uh, and we'll let, we'll add a third alternative. There are min largely smaller markets. Like, can you give me an example? Oh, sure. Augusta, Georgia. Right. Uh, America doesn't fly to Augusta. U.S. Airways does. There are, there are I don't know, 60, 70 cities that American flies to that U.S. Airways doesn't. Uh, so we'll be able to take people now um, to Augusta on American Airlines, and you couldn't do that before. And there, like I say, there are hundreds of cities like that on both networks, where either one of us flew to it or the other, but both of us didn't. So 6,700 routes, roughly, if you look at the two combined together, yeah. only only 12 overlapping nonstops. So given the footprints are so different, how do you leverage it by just... Do, by, by, by doing more than just saying, well, now you can go to more places. Well, that, well, well, that is it. I mean, the, is, that, the is that the is, whole story? Well, it, it's the primary part of the story. I mean, the reality is you take these two networks that are so complementary, put them together, and you create for both independent units connections that never could have existed before online. So that's the primary source of the value. There's, there's, there are other, you know, once you do that, of course, uh, you can create more value by now going to corporate customers, for example, and saying, look, we, we want your business back. We've lost it. One of, one of the airlines over time has lost that business to one of these larger airlines that can take you to all those places. So now we can now we can be competitive in those to those accounts. So you're going to go more head to head, be able to compete in effect more effectively. Um, do you think consumers will see lower airfares as a result of that that choice to to be more competitive, go head to head with the big yeah. guys? Yeah, airfares in particular are hard to predict, of course. There are yeah. all sorts of things that affect airfares. But one of the things, what certainly what affects pricing in any, in any business is supply and demand. And the reality is here, we're taking two airlines, putting them together and not taking out supply. We're putting the two networks together and, and creating one that's as big as the two independently and has a platform for more growth. So there's nothing in here that, and again, creating a third large competitor to two very large competitors now. So while, while, it's, while it's not possible for me to tell you L fares are going to go up or down because that's going to happen independent of what happens in this merger, uh, what I do know is this merger won't cause prices to go up or down because of the, because of the merger itself. Uh, the merger will create a third good competitor to two airlines that are right now um, don't have as much competition as they will once we get this done. So you're going to have competition for the economy seat, obviously. Yeah. You're going head to head with other guys trying to fill seats. Uh, the business traveler, though, uh, that front end of the plane's real expensive. So, is that where the money is? We like all of our customers, and they're all important. Certainly, business travelers are a huge part of the airline business and the ability to be profitable. And American Airlines has done a really nice job over time of, of attracting more than its share of high end customers, and we'll, we're going to maintain that focus. And they're, they're, Again, much of what business customers want is the ability to get anywhere they can whenever they want. And is that why you said you're going to keep all six hubs, three and three? That's a lot of hubs. Yeah, but if you look at where they are uh, on the map, they fit together perfectly. A very strong East Coast focus at U.S. Airways where American had a hole, uh, and we fill that hole in very nicely. So, yeah, the hubs all make sense. I've spoken with a number of different American employees from uh, baggage handlers to uh, captains to flight attendants, and they told me that with regards to management at American, it was always them versus us. That's a tough legacy to deal with. How are you going to try to get through that? 
Oh, we again, not knowing so much about what's happened in the past in America. What I, I what I can tell you is what we the way we like to interact with our employees, and you know what that is is just communicating a lot. We do it at U.S. Airways. I think it's been it helps me tremendously to do my job. I spend it's got more than half of my time out talking to employees uh, and listening to them and learning from them about what they're doing, and that's what we'll do here. I think it makes a big difference. You know, this is. For the most part, uh, I'm certain at American, like it is at U.S. Airways, there are people out there that are doing fantastic jobs, and all they want to do is know that what they're what they are doing is 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 respected, and that they have the tools they need to do their jobs. They know how to do their jobs. Management's job is just to give them what they need to go do it, uh, and to make sure they understand what that role is in their company and where their company's headed. And we can do those things. And I think as we do those things, uh, this airline is going to be a force to be reckoned with. What's your perception of 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 personalities at the two different companies? Well, look, I started American. I know American's system well. It's, it's uh, an airline that is a fantastic brand, uh, management team that is outstanding. You know, from, I, I was hired there, so I, I always thought it's we where hired, you met your wife. I always thought we, I was where I met my wife. I always thought we hired the best people there, and I've been, I was there last week talking to a number of the people there, and what I've found is a fantastic group of management people that are excited and ready to go. So we've got a great opportunity here to take two cultures, put them together, and create one that's even better uh, with the best management team in the business, and we're excited about that. So this merger effectively completes the cycle of consolidation, right? All the big guys, all the legacy carries are, have now merged. So what happens next? Is it cross-border deals? Is it you going out and buying a, a smaller airline? What do you think happens? Well, we need to get through this one first. And what I think is we've done a really nice job now of getting the industry uh, to be where it's it, 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 intensely competitive, but also can compete with the rest of the world. And right now, we, we don't do that very well. Um, other countries do a better job of having policies for their for their national airlines and their national airline system that allow them to com allow them an advantage to compete with us. We need to do some work now as an industry. Like what? Uh, like s subsidizing uh, airlines. I'm not suggesting we do that, but we are. Some, there's some some of what our government does actually, you know, through. Uh, import-export financing, for example, uh, provides subsidies to other airlines on Boeing aircraft that we don't get. Um, examples like that, no, no, this, this, that issue is not one per se that is one that's particularly troubling, uh, but there are issues like that where we just don't have in this, in our government, um, the kind of support that we think this industry needs. And we've spent the last... And is that the administration? Or is that something structural about it's the U.S.? It's, it's the history. And, and we've done it to ourselves, frankly. We've, we've spent so much time as an industry fighting each other and fighting each other in Washington <laughs> that we haven't had a cohesive strategy to go talk about the value of the industry. We're doing a much better job now. It's actually one of the things consolidation does. Uh, when, there, when there are fewer of us trying to fight over the same customers um, and, actually, and, and now actually have an industry that is intensely competitive, but... Um, also is one that has fewer players um, in the industry. We do a better job of being one unit in talking in Washington, which we are allowed to do. And that'll help. And I think what you'll see is an industry that has one, that has one voice that is, that is talking to uh, our elected officials about the value of this business and how we don't need to be taxed as highly as we are, how we do need to have um, the ability to fly to more places more e easily, how we do need to be make it easier for customers to do that. Um, and we haven't, we haven't spoken with one voice in the past, and that hurts you in Washington. So 10 years from now, you think the industry will be stronger? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think, I, think it'll be, I think it's stronger now than it was 10 years ago, and I think 10 years from now it'll certainly be stronger. We would say uh, an industry, it better be. Uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't an industry that's ever been able to meet its returns on capital. Investors are demanding that, and we need to go do it. I think, I think we have the structure now to go do that and to have a, a very competitive industry, but one that can also that can provide returns to investors uh, that we haven't been able to do in the past, and we're committed to doing that. And 10 years from now, you'll be 61, still pretty young. Where do you think you'll be? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. Probably talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a deal. Great.